Hi guys, in this video we'll be talking about the exception to the law of demand. Now according to the law, when the price of the commodity increases, the quantity demanded of it decreases and when the price of the commodity decreases, the quantity demanded increases. Now this law, it holds true for most cases. However, there are certain commodities and certain situations to which the law does not apply. So let us look at them one by one. The first one is your conspicuous goods. The conspicuous goods are your very expensive, high brand, luxurious goods which are demanded by the rich. Now these goods, they are valuable because they are exclusive. Only a few people can afford them. They can be your expensive diamond, an expensive watch or a designer bag. So these items, they are the status symbol of the rich. The rich people, they buy these goods, they purchase these goods in order to show off their wealth and accomplishment to others. Even the not so rich, they indulge in buying these goods so that others perceive them as wealthy and successful people. So you see these goods, they are not uh, bought for their practical utility or for their features, but rather as a show off, just to show off your wealth and your status in the society. So the higher the price of these goods, the more is the prestige value associated with these goods and the more is the desirability and demand for these goods. Now, when the price of these goods it decreases, the prestige value associated with these goods also decreases, which in turn leads to the decrease in demand for these goods. So you see, these goods, they are in direct contradiction to your law of demand. Now, this kind of psychological effect on human beings this is also called your wavelength effect, the status craving uh, psychological effect where you indulge in extravagant buying just to show off, that is called your wavelength effect. The term wavelength, it was coined after an American economist, Wavelin, who discovered this phenomenon, this uh, behavior in human beings. Now, the other kind of good that does not abide by your law of demand is the given good. A Scottish economist, Sir Robert Giffen, he discovered a very interesting phenomenon in Britain. In Britain, in the 19th century, when the price of the bread increased, the quantity demanded of bread, instead of decreasing, it further increased. Now, why did this happen? The Britons, uh, they were accustomed to eating bread. Bread was their staple diet and along with bread, they also ate other expensive food items such as your meat. Now, when the price of the bread increased, the purchasing power of the Britons, it declined so much that they had to cut down the consumption of your expensive food items like your meat. Now, instead of meat also, the Britons, they started consuming more of bread. Because even though the price of the bread had increased, it was still cheaper than meat. So now, in order to fulfill their calorie intake, the Britons, they started consuming more of bread. So the increase in price of the bread, it led to the further rise in the demand of bread instead of falling the demand. So this effect, this kind of goods, the bread here is called your given goods. So your given goods, they do not comply the law of demand. Now your given goods are generally your inferior goods, inferior goods that do not have a close substitute. Now you have to remember one thing here that all given goods they are your inferior goods but all in goods they are not your given goods because the inferior goods that have a close substitute they do not fall under this category because a commodity that has a close substitute it it abides by the law of demand whenever its price increases people will buy start buying its substitute so the demand for the the good it decreases with the increase in price in case of goods that have close substitute but your given goods are the goods that that form a staple part of someone's uh, diet or someone's consumption and that do not have a close substitute so these goods they do not abide by your law of demand Number three, conspicuous necessities. Conspicuous necessities are the necessities of your modern life, like your TV, your fridge, your cooking gas. We have used these goods so much in our daily lives that now we cannot imagine our lives without these goods. 
So even though the price of these goods increase, increases, the demand for these goods, they do not show a tendency to fall. So the pr increase in price, it does not affect the demand of these commodities very much. The other is your future expectation about prices. So let's say the real estate market is at a boom right now. The price, the prices of house, it's increasing every day. So if I am a consumer looking to buy a house, then I'll buy the house today because in the future I expect that the price will increase even further. So you see, even though the price is increasing today, the demand for house it's increasing even further because in the future customer expect that the price will increase even further. The fifth one is the irrational consumer. Now the law of demand it expects a consumer to be rational, to make prudent and informed decision. But a consumer cannot always be rational. Sometimes he takes impulsive decisions also. So in those cases, the law of demand, it does not apply. Demand for necessities. So when it comes to your basic necessities of life, like your food, clothes and shelter, then you have to consume a minimum quantity of those goods, no matter whatever is the price. So the price is not a determining factor for the demand of those uh, necessities because you have to consume a certain quantity of them. So in this case also, the law of demand, it does not apply. Now the last one is your speculative goods. So your speculative goods are your share and stock market. These markets, they run on sentiments. Whenever the, the price of the shares or the stock, it increases, then the demand for those uh, shares and stock, it also increases. And whenever the price decreases, the demand also decreases. So this is in direct contradiction to your law of demand. So guys, these were your exceptions to the law of demand. I hope you've understood uh, all of them. And if you like this video, then please subscribe to the channel for more uh, content on different topics of economics. Thank you.